Uh, we we are here today with uh, Dr. Omar again, and uh, we will be continuing to talk about um, marriage and also uh, the disorder in our society and how it relates to the disorder in our marriages and uh, how these are interconnected with one another. Um, but we'll be talking about marriage in general, inshallah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> having said that, Dr. Omer, um, last time uh, the interview you did about marriage, a lot of people loved it. And so I want to take some of those ideas that you mentioned uh, forward. Um, we had talked about male chauvinism quite a lot, but now I want to maybe focus more on the feminism aspect of marriage. The mm. I was calling feminazi, you know, <laughs> uh, and um, so if um, you can shed light on, I guess, Khadija, who is, why was she a successful businesswoman earning more than her husband, but yet she was in her marriage, she was in complete harmony with the prophet mm. versus mm. versus what happens nowadays. Is there sisters that are earning more than their husband and it causes disharmony, partly due to the man feeling insecure mm. and partly due to uh, the wife feeling that since I earn X and you earn Y, therefore that has consequences in the marriage. So this yeah. is the Asia model versus the disorder we find ourselves in today. If you can shed light on that. I think a lot of husbands are going through this and a lot of marriages are going through this. Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. May it please Allah to um, grant us his refuge and his inspiration during this hour. This is a very important aspect of the Prophet's the Sunnah and Khadijah's Sunnah, okay, if I can use that term. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Because um, if, if his wives are considered to be the mothers of Islam, she is the mother of the mothers of Islam. Oh, inshallah. <laughs> okay, wow. we'll, put it, we'll put it that way. And wow. why was she successful in this marriage? She was successful in this marriage because the female counterpart of what we were discussing as chivalry, the feminine counterpart was present in her. Mm -hmm. She was all woman. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even as a successful business lady, she was all woman. Mm -hmm. Now, the successful business lady and the successful woman know that it is counterproductive for the relationship that they desire with their men, be it their husband, their brother, their fathers, their uncle. It is counterproductive for them to enter into competition with them. Mm. Okay. Why? Well, how shall I say this? I'm currently rewriting the my first book on marriage uh, because I want to trim it down and just get to the essentials for the more, uh, uh, I want to say simple-minded, but there's there's no other way to put it. Um, if you want to get down to the fundamentals, you have to erase all the abstract concepts and just say it straightforwardly. So I want to trim that down. But to, to put it like it is, Khadijah did not compete with her husband. Mm. She never competed with him. She was his companion, okay? Mm. Now, when you speak about the companions of the prophet, the only ones that uh, 
uh, may have been considered competitors were those who tried to be the false prophets, mm. if you will. There were a couple that were mentioned in his in his uh, in his uh, biography that I remember reading about, wow. and these men tried to be companions, but they were also trying to compete with him in the office of prophethood. Okay. Right. This is a mistake, and they never really entered his inner circle. They never, they were rebuffed. They, they never came close, and they were never really considered, you know, companions, if you will. Companions do not compete with you unless mm -hmm. it's on the playing field, like in the game of, you know, football or whatever the case might be. Right. That's, right. A, that's a different matter because men need to challenge each other. But women should never challenge men, mm. not in that way, okay? If a woman wants to um, challenge her man's judgment, she needs to approach him as she would the king. You see, this is part of the chivalry. This and Khadija was this chivalry. woman. Yeah. Khadija was this woman. Why? Why Why do I say that? Oh, my God. Am I trying to say that all husbands are kings? In essence, yes. Now, and maybe king is not the correct word, but for want of a better concept, we'll just use it now. Because the essence of manhood is leadership. And the only castle that he can command is that of his home, mm. okay? Now, if a, man, if a man's authority reaches out beyond his home, that's something that either comes from Allah or it comes from Iblis, okay? That's a different matter. Mm. But I'm talking about now the, the command that he, the authority that he has in his home. You see, the male and the female are equal, but the male is just a little bit above the woman. Why? Mm. Well, someone has to decide. Someone has to make the final decisions, mm -hmm. yes or no. Okay. Yes. Someone has we to. We do it in all it. other institutions. There's always, uh, <laughs> you know, one CEO, <laughs> yes. one, you know, one president at a university. That's right. Do it for every be... institution in the world, except we want to change it for marriage. Yes, we can't do that. That's incorrect. Now, Khadija, she understood this. She knew this. And she knew of her husband's prophethood, I think, before he did, you see. Yeah. Women have this kind of intuition, but the wise woman holds back until the man is ready, okay, to enter in. Why? Because the man has to make the decision to do it. It is part of manhood. Mm. If a woman enters into... Um, competition with the man, then she is no longer a woman. She becomes a man. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this this negates the marriage right away. You see, there's no complementarity there. There is the butting of heads. And if you want to butt heads, a man is ready to do that. Okay. Mm. A real man will. Now, the, the, the effeminate man he, he will switch positions. He'll become submissive, okay? But the real man will butt the head until the woman can't butt anymore. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and, okay. and over here, or I want to share with you two, two studies. Uh, one was a study um, that uh, talked about gender communications. Mm. And in that... Um, one of the recommendations, I'm giving you the summary of it, is basically mm -hmm. if a wife asks her husband, like, vacuum the house, mm -hmm. she should wait at least 15 to 20 minutes to tell him again because he has to convince himself that it's his decision to do it. But <laughs> if she interrupts during that time, he has to mm -hmm. start the process over again 
convincing <laughs> yes. yourself my idea. <laughs> you know? Yes, it's it's akin to that. What I'm discussing is akin to that kind of uh, fundamental um, elementary psychology, if you will. But the the uh, authority, the realms of authority here are separate and they're different. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the diplomacy, okay? It's the, the art of diplomacy. Within marriage. Oh my yes. God, such a beautiful word. Yes, the wife has to be a diplomat, okay? And not only that, the women have a problem, especially in this day and age of the feminazi, as you, if you say, and the yeah. prophet alluded to this when he mentioned about all the, uh, the, the, the multitude of women he said he saw in hell. Okay, he was talking about this generation, from what right. I understand, right. correct me right. yes. if I'm wrong. Yes. He was not talking about his present generation, he was talking about our generation. Mm -hmm. That the, this, this contemporary generation, most of the women, most of the women who are most of the inhabitants of hell were women, and why? Because they are um, un, uh, ungrateful. Okay. Now, this is an attitude of arrogance. Okay, and women pretend to be otherwise, but in fact they are arrogant. Um, and I will. I'll tell you something that I often tell people when the subject comes up, and that is the subject of the feminine pride. The worst leaders that you could ever have is a proud woman, okay, an arrogant woman. They make the worst leaders in the world. They are more sadistic than the men, okay? Mm -hmm. This is on record. This is, this is historical. This, this is, is historically, this. like, if you look at Madame Albright, uh, oh, you look at Mark lady, Thatcher. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Even Thatcher is as kindly as she appeared to be. She was a cruel sadist. Uh, she knew all about the, the, the homosexuals and the pederast, the pedophiles uh, rampant in the kingdom, and she did nothing to stop it. Okay, nothing. Now, what woman in her right mind, in her right spirit, in her right soul would permit that to continue? None that I know. Okay. Now I'll ask you another question. When is the last time you ha uh, you heard a woman say, "I'm sorry"? Mm. I have never heard a grown woman apologize for anything. Nothing. I've had I've experienced several men, and including myself apologizing profusely here, there, in the next place for whatever mistakes we do. Women almost never across the board apologize for anything, okay? This is a big problem, and it's one that men encounter all the time, and it leaves us kind of helpless because really at the at the bottom of it no there man many, in his many right sessions mind. in counseling where i have to apologize on behalf of the wife yes <laughs> not in a very diplomatic way that look your wife yes. didn't say mm -hmm. it but she does mean sorry to yes. kind of no, they, they refuse they refuse and this is part of the little princess syndrome and uh, daddies are a bit responsible for this and uh, mm. uh, unfortunately they teach their sons to say sorry, but not their daughters, okay? The discipline of the father for the daughters is uh, less severe, okay? And it shouldn't be. It should not be. Every time you place your son in the corner for, you know, with a dunce hat on his head for being stupid, the girl is just as stupid, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in a different fashion. And the discipline should not be left up to the to, to the mother, and it should not be biased in that way. Mm -hmm. Because the morals are equal, you see. The right. moral concept, the moral concept that you encounter throughout all of the Quran is good deeds are recorded or rewarded uh, by better, mm. by better, okay? And bad deeds are rewarded by worse, mm. okay? So uh, this principle needs to be also in the instruction of the, uh, of the women, and it's not getting there. So they don't say sorry. 
they think that they're exceptional, like the Jews, you see. So in this realms, and I'm sorry, ladies, but you know what I'm saying is true. Okay. Yeah, I think Otherwise, you would another, say, interesting, <laughs> another interesting study on this. Uh, I'll, I'll mention two, mm-hmm. and then you can comment on this also. Mm-hmm. One is that uh, sure. we, we, we learn that a lady or a girl learns herself dignity self-respect based upon how her dad treats her so if her dad treats her well she's going to expect her husband to treat her well but at the same time if the daddy never taught her to say sorry which happens a lot because daddies Mm -hmm. love their daughters uh, then she's going to learn not to say sorry to her husband and i think that is when i look at the prophet and fatima he was very loving to her yes but I definitely see the prophet putting his foot down many times with her too. Yes, yes, yes. The uh, so getting back to Khadijah, if we would, um, one of the reasons that uh, Khadijah, in my mind, is held in such high esteem, is because she, uh, in her being, in her complete surrender to her feminism she was able to complete the uh, masculinity, you see, of her husband, Mm. you see. And she did this so completely and so thoroughly, all of the other women who followed as his wives were superficial. I mean, they're not superficial, but they they were not necessary in that realm, you see, because he had already been completed by her. Right. I His see manhood had already been fulfilled. By no me. other woman could do that. You see, only Khadijah. She not only fulfilled his manhood, she completed his uh, prophethood. She, com- she opened those gates. Okay. Now, what do I mean by that? I, I mean, it, it's... Let's go back to the imagery of the left and right brain, okay? If you sever the two, you have um, two halves, okay? And they can act independently, and they do act independently, but they ignore the other half, you see? So if they are complete in their communication between the right and left brain, there's a balance that occurs, then you have complementarity. Mm-hmm. Complementarity. And it is this complementarity between the woman and the man that completes the human being. Mm-hmm. Khadija did this. You see? Right. And this is why um uh what's the his youngest wife um i'm blocking on her name now um, aisha? Uh, yeah aisha this is why aisha was always jealous of khadijah even though khadijah was dead you see mm-hmm. because aisha was not necessary in that realm the prophet had already been completed as a man mm-hmm. so he already uh, had the children with her he, he had, everything, everything had been done. So the what uh, Aisha's task as his wife, as we now know, was completely different. It mm-hmm. was to carry on the legacy, if you will, right. and right. then enter into the realm of what has become Islamic history. Mm. But it was not to fulfill the prophet as a man. He was already fulfilled, you see. So, so the opposite of a feminazi is a diplomatic wife. Yes, we can put it that way. <laughs> and a diplomatic person says sorry quite often. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> and the more that a woman offends her husband and fails to say sorry, the more distant he becomes from her. Even if she, he stays in the same house and goes through all of the niceties that belong to you know, Atlak and all that sort of thing. The Atlak is never fulfilled in reality because there's this barrier and the barrier is created by pride. Mm. The very first sin. 
And this sin was not committed by man. It was committed by Iblis. Mm. See, this is the, I mean, what we know of on record. We don't know of any other precedents. So, so then that. let me bring up some scenarios. There are many scenarios where the yes. wife is more educated than her husband. Yes. And so let's say she's a doctor and uh, he, um, you know, he, he's not into books. He does something else. He's a carpenter. Mm -hmm. And she yes. feels, she feels that, you know, I have to make a lot of decisions because he just doesn't get it. And, oh. uh, you know, she doesn't look at him as, you know, when she married him, she, she had a crush on him. He was charming. But then when life started a year later, two years later, she realized, wait, we're not on the way, same wavelength intellectually. He was charming me. But, you know. <laughs> now here we are. Uh, I find him attractive physically, but, you know, I can't really have deep conversations with him. And there are many, many women that are more educated than their husbands in the Muslim world right now, especially here in the U.S. Yes. This is a, this should not be a problem in the marriage. They make it a problem because of uh, um, un, unreasonable expectations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's put this into proper perspective. Okay. This is why people have problems because they don't have the proper perspective perspective and they're following vain imaginations. So when I say an irresponsible expectation, irrational expectation, it is a vain imagination. Then the vain imagination becomes their reality, you see, mm -hmm. when in fact it isn't a reality. So mm -hmm. the 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 jinn get hold of this thing and they inflate it. Mm -hmm. And they inflate it so that it becomes a problem and will break the marriage. When she met this man, she fell in love with his manhood. Okay. She did not fall in love with him because he was a doctor or an intellectual. She fell in love with him because he was a man. Okay, mm -hmm. And his manhood has an authority in the realm of the activities which he has chosen to become a man at doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with her profession. OK, so if she wants to have intellectual conversations about, about uh, uh, this, that and the next thing in her profession, she can have that with someone else. OK, uh, with someone who is not uh, uh, involved, uh, so, someone who is in, involved in her profession. OK, mm -hmm. if she fell in love with this man because he kind hearted, because he was um, uh, noble in his akhlaq, in his uh, posturing uh, mm. towards the world and towards himself, towards her and towards whatever his job was. And that you, you mentioned being a carpenter. There's nothing wrong with being a carpenter. The uh, husband of uh, the mother of Isa was a carpenter. Mm. Isa became a carpenter. OK, following mm -hmm. in Joseph's uh, footsteps. So, you know, what's wrong with this? <laughs> Nothing, you see. So the vain imagination is that, you see. Yeah, and talking about expectations, men don't do that in general. Like, for example, no. if a guy is uh, whatever his field is, he doesn't come home expecting his wife to talk to him about his expertise. Exactly. Or, or, or talk to him yeah. in, or in an intellectual way, let's say. But mm. for some reason, I think the man, the, it's what you said. It's the expectations are not mm -hmm. managed properly. Exactly. And, the, you know, here is something where her husband perhaps uh, is, uh, has fallen down a little bit. Maybe he doesn't understand. But a husband has the responsibility uh, to read his wife like a book. Mm -hmm and to understand her needs and to understand her limitations, okay? And to protect her from overstepping the boundaries of her limitation and to protect her by fulfilling her needs, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if his wife has to, has a need for a, uh, a intellectual conversation in 
her profession or whatever that case might be, he has to make sure that she has the time under the right circumstances to have those conversations with responsible people. Mm -hmm. If he does not make that time for her, she will respect for him, you see. And if she does not, if he does not uh, protect her from uh, people who will take advantage of her weakness as a woman in those realms who might uh, exploit her, okay, she, she might have good intentions, but women are easily exploitable. He has to protect her. He has to step in and say, I don't want you to visit Dr. So-and-so, okay? If he's sponsoring any more of these, uh, he, these seminars, I forbid you from attending. This mm -hmm. man is out to do you harm. And if he does you harm, he's gonna do me harm, okay? So this sort of thing needs to be said. I've often done this in certain realms with, with my wife. Uh, I've, even, I've even told her under certain circumstances, you just tell so-and-so that your husband forbids it. <laughs> and, and Yeah, that's something that guys understand. Sometimes women don't get it, but guys yeah. know guys, and they know that, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, how they think and yes. how they look. Yes, when it's you know it, we're in when women enter into profession, enter into the professional realms, or they enter into the business realm, they have to have uh, relationships with all kinds of people, and so the husband has to be aware of this. He has to be vigilant, okay. And when he when the wife sees him being vigilant and protecting her in this domain. Uh, she will respect him and love her more for it. It's like the child who uh, uh, wants to stretch the limits of his of, of what he can and cannot do. Okay, mm -hmm. women will push a man to these limits just to see if the man responds. Mm -hmm. If the man doesn't respond, then she decides one of two things: either he's not paying attention, or he doesn't care, or right. both. Absolutely. You're absolutely so, right. um, yeah. this is this is a realm in which women push men just to see what they will how they will respond. And husbands have to be vigilant to this and they also have to respond diplomatically. It doesn't mean you have to have an, an out and out argument over these things. The husband just has to be firm. You mm -hmm. see, firm is firm. OK. And, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't have to go beyond that. That doesn't mean when you know husband and wives aren't going to have their spats. They certainly do, and they're terrible at times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when when my wife and I have such a spat, and believe me, we love each other dearly, but we fight sometimes. On occasion, it happens, and uh, it's usually over some sort of misunderstanding or something. God knows what it is. But when it happens, and then uh, uh, we see what we're, we're, the rage rises and rises and rises, and then you're just butting head and you're saying all sorts of things that should not be said, you stop. You stop. Okay. I stop. We generally stop for three days, okay? We stay in the house. We go about our business separately. And we don't speak for three days until until everything is calmed down. Mm. That has saved our marriage. Okay, if you don't do something like that, then you know everything's going to get blown out of proportion because the jinn are always there, waiting to inflate all of these vain imaginations, all of these errors. Okay, it's a constant dynamic. But getting back to Khadija and the businesswoman that she was, obviously she had uh, relationships with all sorts of people sure. and all sorts of men from other tribes and other merchants. Mm -hmm. And she was able to handle a portion of that responsibility to the prophet during those years when he was fulfilling his manhood under the watch of her womanhood, you mm -hmm. see. And they were completing this complementarity, okay? It was completed, and 
they had this this give and take, this give and take going back and forth, this intermingling that occurs with the, the husband and wife. It's a dance. It's a dance is what it is, you see. And then it whirls and it twirls and it reaches the heavens. <laughs> See, it reaches the heavens. It's the real tango. Okay? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's what that is what the tango is all about. Okay, so um, interesting. Okay, Put so right listen, there. ladies, if you want a good husband, find a man who can dance. Okay, <laughs> and he <laughs> and uh, anyway, you understand what I'm saying. This, yeah. this so dance, an emotional this dance, interaction, basically. these dynamics, yeah. this swirling. This is all based. Not just on the spirit, not just on the uh, soulful elements of our being, but actually on the physical elements. The physical elements play here because it's all Tawhid, you see. Yeah. So uh, this, if there is an element that causes this dance to stop, and then there's a rigid polarization, and people begin to come apart, the mm -hmm. dance stops, okay, the, the dance stops, this yeah. rigidity sets in, and then that, that physical, the physical realm is also affected. You see, the relationship begins, it begins with the act of sex, you see, right. it begins with the act of sex. Now, there's an attraction, and this attraction is physical. And I want to explain this so that everybody understands, okay, mm -hmm. who is listening here, because uh, this, uh, this attraction is not just chemical, it's beyond, it goes into the subatomic dynamic realm, you see, mm -hmm. and this is a realm where the spirit meets the physical, and where the spiritual dynamism comes from, we don't know. It is a gateway that uh, we, we may enter in the dream world, okay, uh, somewhat. It's not just an imagination of the brain, this dream world. This dream world is very real, mm. okay? They can be fanciful imagination. It depends on what you believe, kind of drugs you take and all that sort of thing. But if you are in the right spirit and you enter the dream world, you've had, everyone has had these dreams where they wake up, you see, and they don't know where they are. <laughs> and they right. don't know which world was more real, you see. Right. And uh, this, this, uh, this meeting at the sexual realm, at the, at the subatomic realm, is where the creative forces that enter the world, that's where they meet in the marriage. Mm -hmm. And it's all about creation. Mm -hmm. It's all about the act of recreation. It's all about the act of continuity. It's all about the act of bringing forth the kingdom of God so that the kingdom in the material meets with the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So that this is in order. Now, this realm is also one of complementarity. It has to be complement. It has to be complemented. It has to be complementary. The relationship has to be complementary at that subatomic realm. Mm. This is why, for example, Prophet was uh, presented with a woman that um, uh, he may or may not have wanted for wife, but she refused him. Mm -hmm. You remember that story. Yeah. This woman re now who's going who in their right mind is going to refuse the prophet as a as a husband? Well, somebody who doesn't have the correct vibes. Mm. We used to call them vibes back in the sixties. Yeah. Because that's what they are. Yeah. That's what they are. This is we're talking about tensor vibrational configurations that are elect that create electromagnetic fields. These have to be complementary complementary at the subatomic level. If they are not, all the sex in the world isn't going to make the correct the, the marriage correct. You see, mm -hmm. this is one other reason the marriage should never be forced. You should never force a woman to marry a man she's not attracted to, or vice versa. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
unless there's another reason. You have another. You have other reasons for marriage. You have for social reasons. You have for piety. Uh, you have for beauty, aesthetics, uh, for what, whatever. But the this this is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the prophet's marriage to Khadijah. Hmm. The prophet's marriage to Khadijah had everything. Hmm. It had beauty. It had the complementarity and you around. It had all of these elements all together. So for all the right reasons they were together, they were complementary. And because they were complementary and they maintained their diplomatic status with each other via what they knew and what they developed of what we call aklak, okay, then they were able to successfully incarnate the prophethood together. Mm -hmm. Without Khadijah, this would not have been possible. Mm. You see? So, uh, for all you guys out there think you can manage it on your own, and all you women out there think you can manage it on your own, forget it. You are following a vain imagination. Allah made us to be married, okay? Right. Full stop, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that everybody qualifies for marriage. And if you don't qualify for marriage, the next best thing you can do is support it, hmm. okay? And submit yourself to someone who is married, okay? Instead of banging your head against them out of jealousy or envy or whatever the case might be. This is an element of importance here because the other thing that um, made the marriage of Khadijah successful to the Prophet was the Prophet's submission to the men in his life. Hmm. See, to men who were wiser than him. Oh my God, can I say that? Yes, I can, because it's truth. Okay. The men who brought him, who raised him, okay, she saw that when he was confused about something, he would go to them to get advice, okay? The man who doesn't seek advice from men wiser than him is a dangerous man. Mm. Okay? And the wife will not trust him. Mm -hmm. Because the wife will see right away what a man's limitations are. She will study Very him. Very good point. So a wife sees what the limitations of a man is. So the man has to be the type of guy who's, wait, let me ask my dad, or let me ask uh, scholar yes. XY, or let me ask some elder, right? That has to be yes. there. Yes. So that... <laughs> I mean, that, that's good for the guy to be humble that way and to recognize his own limitations. Exactly. exactly. But it's also so, good for her because she knows that he knows his limitations and he's going to go ask people. Yes, and this is what makes a community, you see. Right. This is what makes a community. And this relationship of the young men to the older men and the young women to the older women is now missing in our communities. Right. It's not there anywhere. Everyone is busy butting heads because of these vain imaginations that I mentioned at the beginning, these irrational expectations. And most of these irrational expectations are because the entire world has become Jewified. Mm. Now, I mean that truly, Jewified. And when I say Jewified, I mean monetized. So mm. that everybody's thinking in with a monetary mindset so that the, uh, the moral aspects are not the bottom line. The profit becomes the broad bottom line. What mm -hmm. do I get out of this? What does he get out of this? Da, mm. da, 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 da. And then before you know it, everybody's arguing over the wrong thing. Mm. Because the, the things we take with us to the grave are certainly not monetized. Right. <laughs> That's true. And so uh, what do you advise a sister yes. who really feels uh, or, or uh, there are two questions, I guess, in this. Number one, uh, I let's say a sister says, I really feel my husband's wrong about. I'll give you a typical example. Sure. Uh, let's say uh, he says children should go to public school. 
She hmm. says, no, they should go to an Islamic school. Or she says, uh, they should do homeschooling. And he says they should go to public school. Hmm. So let's say he's wrong and she's right. How does she go about dealing with her husband in this case? Well, she has to um, look at it this way. Okay. If she fights with him over this matter, then she is um, entering into the male's authority, the, male, the, the, the masculine dominion. He is the one who decides, not her. Okay? She has already admitted that by marrying him. Mm. By marrying him, she uh, admits that he is the one who decides. Okay? Right. This is the, what the, the word God actually means. It means he who decides. Okay. 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 So somebody has to be the decider. Yeah. So you can present your opinions in court, okay? But when the judge decides, it doesn't matter whether or not you think he's wrong. Right. Your opinion no longer matters, okay? The decision has been made. The course of action is set. Mm. So uh, she has to submit, okay? Now, if she doesn't want to submit, that's grounds for divorce. Mm -hmm. Because it's better to divorce than to maintain a relationship and butt heads, you see. Right. If she butts head with her husband over this matter and resentfully sends them to public school instead of cooperating with the decision, then she's going to make the situation worse. Because mm -hmm. it may, it may be, uh, there may be an element of uh, a benefit that is there that she cannot mm. see. Allah has said, there is something you do not like, but I mean it for your good. This right. goes for everything, everything in life. When mm. something doesn't go your way, there's a lesson there for you to be learned, or mm. there's a lesson, lesson there awaiting for you to strike at the right moment to teach someone else it was an error. Mm. So you're not going to be able to teach from a position of arrogance, okay? Right. And you're not going to be able to help your children uh, overcome the difficulties from a position of resentfulness. Mm. So she, her best course of action is to humble herself and submit and trust in Allah. Mm. Okay. Her husband had this, has decided. She has made a commitment to her husband. And part of this commitment to their husband is that they raise the children together. Okay. Mm. Now, if she wants to butt heads, she can pretend then to be the authority, and this is going to get her into trouble, because right. this, this kind of trouble is that of dissolution. Mm -hmm. It's the dissolution of a unity, okay? And there's nothing more important than unity, okay, except for morality. And this decision has nothing to do what is, what, what, with what is moral, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, she may think otherwise, but that's not it. The husband has, let me explain this uh, in a way so that um, people can understand, and especially wives can understand. The vision of a man is farsighted. The vision mm -hmm. of a woman is nearsighted, okay? So you can imagine, imagine it this way. The man is looking at the horizon, the woman is looking at his feet mm -hmm. okay, to make sure that he doesn't step into a hole. Okay? Right. And he's looking at the horizon to make sure she doesn't fall off a cliff. Mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> so, while she's looking you know, at the ground uh, or you know, enter into enemy territory, whatever the case might be. Right. Right. So when, when a woman is uh, is vying with her husband over these far-sighted uh, uh, matters, she is entering the realm of masculinity, and she's disqualifying herself from the diplomatic core of the true feminine spirit. Mm -hmm. okay? And this will serve to dissolve the marriage. 
because the, the marriage is not only one of complementarity, it is one of her submission to him as the authority. Because mm -hmm. who else does he have authority over? Nobody. Mm -hmm. you see? His authority begins with her. A man's authority begins with his wife. Okay? It doesn't begin with anyone, maybe a dog. <laughs> okay? Come here. Fetch. Right. It's kind of like, know, if, this if I disagree thing. with my supervisor, I can go to the okay. person that is the manager of the supervisor. Oh, dear. So in yeah. this case, if she disagrees with her husband, she has to go to Allah. And... Uh, or, or, or I guess it depends on how the community is, but, but if she disagrees, she goes to Allah because Allah, and, and so she obeys her husband, but she can do dua to Allah or ask Allah to make a way, uh, and she has to kind of like accept that system, and that is the system of harmony. She's, she's working within a certain system, and she has to accept those limitations. Otherwise, she's going to enter into a realm of rebellion that is not going to liberate her. It's only going to make matters worse, okay, unfortunately. So, uh, you know, we have to can make the best... Can you just repeat what you said because it got a little bit... Can you repeat what oh. you just said? It just got a little bit cut off. Yeah. Yes, okay. She has, to, she has to submit to the system in which she finds herself. Unfortunately, most social many social systems are not ideal okay so and they have uh, uh, faults and she has to work within those faults this is a challenge to her cunning this is a challenge to her intellectual abilities mm -hmm. it's also a challenge to her emotional response responses ex excuse me um she has to, no doubt, work within those limitations. If she goes over his head, that automatically destroys the marriage. Mm. Okay? It's like if you go over the, the head of your boss behind his back, okay? Now yeah, you you're going to get over, fired. You're going to get fired, okay? Yeah, you're going to get fired. And he, and, or if, if he doesn't have authority to fire you, he's going to make your life miserable, okay? That's true. Yeah. Uh, so... It, it, the woman should never go over the head of her husband behind his back. This is a mortal mistake. It's a mortal blow to the mm. to the to the marriage. Okay, shows and there's one thing that men cannot stand, and that is a disloyal wife. Mm. Mm. And this doesn't have anything to do with sexuality. It has everything to do with honor. Okay, mm. and his honor is at stake, even if he's wrong. So even right. if your husband is wrong, you do not rebuke him in public. It's the same with the for, for the wife. If your wife is wrong, you do not rebuke you re, 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 rebuke her in public. Okay, mm. that's a mortal mistake. It will kill the love. It's a death mm. blow. It's a knife to the heart. Mm. Okay. Don't do this. Don't go behind your husband to go above his head. You can, you can sometimes, you know, if you What do you say if the husband and the wife say very often to me, um, I, I, you know, I just can't help it when I'm mad. Uh, yeah, well, that's oh. okay. Then when, when it happens, uh, then you apologize, okay? If you don't apologize, then you've got a problem, and that problem is pride. How many times do we apologize and uh, for the same, even for the same sin? How many times do we bend our head in prayer and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to God and ask for permission and ask for, uh, 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 for, for forgiveness, okay? If we can do that with God, we should be able to do that with our spouse, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the reflection of what is divine. Mm. If we do not reflect that divinity, we've lost our Islam. Mm. Okay. We're not God. living in it. We're just we're just talking about it. You have to live it. And to live it you have to be merciful. Okay. You have to and, admit and I the think fact, this yeah. talk and this those of you that have watched up till here, this is so important. I can tell you as a counselor that this 
the solution to a uh, feminazi being the diplomatic wife, I think it's so important that really this needs to like spread. You need to share this. And, you know, I don't usually say that in my talks or my interviews, but this is really a lifesaver. Um, and for the sisters that disagree, I would say just try it. Just try being diplomatic for a week or two and see what type of different results you get. Uh, and so, yes, Dr. Omer, any, uh, well, any last words before we finish up or wrap up any, today? Any last words? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, look, there, there are plenty of, um, of, of scriptural uh, images of, of this kind of diplomacy. And uh, especially throughout the Old Testament, there are lots of images of this where the woman, for example, will prepare her husband's best clothes, his best meal, mm. and then offer a supplication for something that she desires to be done. Mm. Okay. This is the way to approach your husband. Okay. Mm. It's a form of sweet talk, <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that, especially if your intention is sincere. If you argue with him, you're going to get the wrong reaction and the opposite reaction from what it is that you desire. So treat your husband as if you would uh, the king or the president or the highest uh, imam that you hold with the highest regard as if he were a visitor. You treat your husband this way and watch and see what happens. Okay, Your marriage will bloom. It will blossom mm. in ways that you right. cannot imagine, provided that the man is, is, has a good heart to begin with. If he's already a reprobate, you're, you're, you're better off just leaving, and you should know whether or not he's a reprobate. And mm. what I mean by reprobate is a man who's forgotten, whose case is forgotten by Allah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Doesn't matter what he prays, doesn't matter what he says, doesn't matter how many beads he counts. All right, mm. Allah is not going to listen to him, and if Allah doesn't listen to him, he's certainly not going to listen to you, okay, mm. no matter what you do for him. But if your man has good intentions, treat him, welcome him with the best of everything that is who comes home. Don't approach him for those first 15 to 30 minutes with any, but or with any problem. Let him come home. Let him shake off. Okay? Give him his cup of coffee. Give him his slippers. Give him whatever it is. Leave him alone and follow his lead and wait for the moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. To present your petition and present it in the right way. Okay, mm -hmm. do do not uh, treat him as if this is, uh, was a business meeting. Even mm. marriage is the most important business. <laughs> it's the most important business deal you'll ever make in your life. So uh, I know I said this in your last words, but I want I I'm almost yes. uh, I have to throw this out there that we do treat uh, our children and our marriage as almost a uh, employer employee relationship many times meaning uh, after a while it becomes more about did you throw out the garbage did you turn off the lights did you you know do this did you pay that bill with the children it becomes like oh what grade did you get how did mm -hmm. you do in school you know did you do that chore and mm -hmm. all that dance that you were talking about the fun stuff yes you know uh this is what Akhlaq is all about. Akhlaq is all about maintaining the diplomatic relationship so that the dance continue. okay? Mm -hmm. If you lose that, if you fall back into the trap of just the mundane, ordinary, you allow yourself to do that, then that's perfect, perfect realm for Iblis to enter, for the jinn to enter with the vain imaginations. Mm -hmm. You see, so you have to make sure that you actively maintain the respect. Remember, I told you there are three types of love. 
the first and most important is that realm. The second is the realm of affection. Okay? Mm -hmm. The third is the sensual realm. Yeah. Respect has everything to do with divine order. Mm. Affection has everything to do that comes as a result of the respect. When you show respect to people, you increase affection, mm. okay? The sensual is something that is separate, okay? Mm. But when it's joined with the first two, then you have an indefeatable bond, okay? Mm. And you have to fight to maintain all three realms. You, this is something that has to be done consciously. And so... It's a responsibility for both. So it's a based upon the three that both. you mentioned, based upon the three that you mentioned, if uh, she is able to play the diplomatic game properly and have that ikhlaq, which it would be the Islamic yes. term, uh, and if she's able to do the third one, which is the physical mm -hmm. aspect, um, yes. then, then that makes it very easy for her to get what she wants in a very nice and smooth in a harmonious way yes yes nothing wrong with that okay uh, sex is uh, and sensuality is there for a reason and that happens to be one of them okay but you have to be careful that you don't become like the wife of uh, Suleiman the Magnificent who persuaded him to kill his best to in order to favor him, hers, mm -hmm. you see. And uh, this is a moment of the Islamic history that people don't like to discuss, but it happened. Okay. Uh, so, one, men have to protect themselves against that, and women have to protect themselves against doing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the wrong, with the wrong in. In other words, to, 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 with the wrong intention, okay, but I want him to do something wrong, so I'm going to be the sweetest and best whore in bed tonight, okay, mm. in order to persuade him to do something wrong. Well, this is the wrong intention, okay. Oh, I really want that new handbag I saw in the window, so I'm going, you know, this is the wrong intention. No, mm. no, the right intention has to be preserved. If you don't have the right intention and then you start to behave in that matter, you will you will corrupt your marriage. And it will dis okay. This is a spiritual principle. It cannot be maintained on that basis. The grace of Allah will, cannot maintain that. And when you lose the grace of Allah, you lose protection and you lose guidance. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's real simple. And when you lose those, you lose health to boot. Okay. Uh, or prone to such losses. Okay. So I think we, we can end here, dear brother. I think we've gone okay. far enough and take this up yeah. again. I, I think this is a good idea to, to, to follow your case histories and then, you know, use that as a basis for the dialogue. I think that's working well. Mm. Okay. Very good, inshallah. So until, uh, inshallah, um, next time uh, you text me and I get your permission to talk again. Uh, okay. The, Okay. In another two or three days, what's up yeah. from what like tomorrow? As you. Have a good day. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas.